semua ni lah. Okay. Hai. Assalamualaikum semua. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Bertemu kita apa untuk hari ini minggu ke-12 tutorial. So hari ni kita akan ada presentation lah uh, tiga grup. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Dua A, enam grup je hari ni eh. Haa uh, betul betul. Ha, jadi maksudnya ada tiga grup je lah. Eh, maknanya tiga grup hari ni, tiga grup uh, minggu depan. Betul tak? Alright. So Madam dah dapat uh, ni uh, link ni. Okay Madam buat macam ni supaya kita selamat lah. So for the first group, it will be uh, four disciplines that related to political science by Nur Aris, Nur Arisni herself, Aisyatul Rodia, Diana and Rezwan Nur Hakim. Betul ya? Tapi setahu Madam, kejap ya. Tapi kenapa grup Muhammad Daniel, Muhammad Azhar dan Muhammad Saufi pun buat soalan yang sama? Ke tak? Sebab mana dia evaluation form ni ha, Ada dua nama ni Rezwan Nur Hakim, Nur Aris ni Aisyah Turadiah dengan Diana Betul ke? Betul Maida Alright, okay, okay Kenapa ada dua grup ke? Salah Okay, tak takpelah uh, So uh, Madam akan Tentangkan uh, yang ni. Okey sedia ya. So Madam minta uh, empat orang ahli grup tu untuk on camera lah. Okey. Dan ber uh, dan bersedia lah untuk soalan lepas habis uh, video ni. Sekejap. Oh my god. Oh siapnya kenapa semua warna hitam Mimi? Ya Allah. Hmm, okay. Okay, boleh nampak ke semua? Boleh, 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 Dengar ke? Dengar? Geografi Tadi Aris ni yang ni siapa? Yang ni siapa eh? Rezwan. Oh, Rezwan rasa di pet juga kan? Yang baca doa malam tadi ke? Ya, yeah, madam. Alright, alright. Geographical 
political geography as a long history as a systematic branch of human geography. If not always noticeable, the past, a precise definition, the issue explored and the approach taken, and the method used to display considerable breadth and variety are elusive in political geography as they are in the other branch of the display. Another viewpoint is that it focuses on the intersection of key geographic concerns such as like space, location, and territory on one side and political power and policy issues on the other side. Finally, political geography has widened the definition of traditional political science method by recognizing that the size of power is not limited to a state and bureaucracy, but it is a part of everyday life. As, As a result, result the, the issue of political, political geography, geography has increasingly much with those of other human, human ge geography, geography subdisciplines such, such as economic, economic geography. geography. Yang ni siapa? Aisyah tu. Okay. Ini yang lain ni. 
different set of norms that the country and society can take in knowledge of the company in its citizens' behavior by enforcing punishments. As we all know, law and political science are linked. The rule of law is a very crucial mechanism for the government's policy. Not only that, it is a tactic that the government enforces in an attempt to persuade the public's opinion. Law also governs how the government is organized, governed, and managed. The rule of law is a prize we want in politics, and the rule of law shapes how the politics is conducted. In conclusion, a more traditional field of study that also focuses on political phenomena that is called as political science have their own mission which is to improve the human understanding of the types and nature of political action as well as to provide more theoretical tools for analyzing political significant effects even better. Democracy, parliaments, partitions, elections, and also administration are among the classic fields of public national life covered by this study. Modern politology, on the other hand, is not restricted at all to what happens at the state level. Okay. Alright. So, boleh ke Madam bagi uh, masa lima minit untuk uh, members of the floor memikir, memikirkan soalan. Lepas tu, uh, tanya kepada keempat-empat uh, presenter kita ni. Boleh ke tanya kepada Rezwan, Aishatul, Dayana dan Arisni. Boleh ke? Okay. Alright. Okay, fikir soalan dulu. Lepas ni minit kembali. Dua, uh, dua minit ke tiga minit. Alright. Okay, members of the floor, are you ready to ask the questions for the presenters? If you have question, you can ask because uh, they will gain uh, 10 marks for each question, okay? You may uh, ask the question and and pick the person who, uh, pick the person that you want to ask, okay? Boleh ke mena dapatkan soalan dan pilihlah pada siapa yang kamu nak tanya soalan tu. Saya Mede. Uh, okay, Saufi. Okay, Saufi dulu. Okay, Saufi nak tanya siapa? Saya nak tanya Rezwan Hakim. Okay, Rezwan. Uh, what's needed for geopolitics to work? Hmm. 
ge uh, geopolitics need about two actor to be separated geographically. Uh, it also need uh, the two actor to be aware of each other. Uh, as a uh, example, if a country polluted a river, then that river uh, go to uh, the other country must be the uh, the other countries uh, must be aware of the pollution of that country because it can uh, pollute their stuff also and 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 there are also a, a, a easier example if there are two owner in a forest and a, a fire occur then uh, there must be two one of the two owner must be res responsible uh, to take action because uh, uh, we must know where the fire come from from the right on the land or the left on the uh, land Alright, very good. Uh, Mereka rasa boleh ke, Sofi? Boleh ke soalan jawapan tu? Kau tak faham? Faham, faham. Boleh, boleh. Boleh uh -huh. diterima. Alright. Okay, thank you Rezwan and Sofi. Okay, Cik Nur Sulhilni, do you have any question to the uh, members of the of this group? Ada, Majlum. Alright, okay. Utarakan soalan kamu. Saya nak tanya Diana. And now, okay, the question must be in English. All right, proceed. Uh, so, what is the meaning of polyotology? Polyotology. Okay, Diana. Uh, okay, even though this question is quite simple, but as but not many of us would know what the meaning of polyotology is. So, polyotology is the study of politics and also political science. Uh, there is also the terms that uh, even I have just uh, found out, and that is politicology. And yeah, uh, it's uh, it's terms uh, in political science that I researched yesterday for this for my own knowledge. Uh, and then if you see in the conclusion, it's, there's a question, there is the word politology uh, and it says modern politology. So it's the, it's the 21st century modern politic research. Oh, 21st century modern, pol uh, modern political research. Yeah, because in the conclusion, it says modern politology. So it's uh, the 21st century now nowadays um politic research all right okay can you accept the answer sulhilni boleh boleh all right so okay. The next, okay we have another two questions for this group okay siapa nak tanya aisyatul radiyah ataupun uh, siapa seorang lagi uh, arisni okay <coughs> okay nak tanya arisni Hmm. Okay, boleh. Dengar kan? Okay, boleh. Uh, Arisni, you have been mentioned that history is very important to the political science. So, my question, how history can be implemented in the political science since we are in the globalization development? Alright, so Arisni, how you answer that? Okay. Thank you, Rabiatul, for the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, politics creates history. Um, so okay. even we are in globalization development, we need to uh, we need to see the history, so that that uh, unfair or unstable politics can be avoided. Um, best based on what what has happened in the past. So I have I have been read of 
uh, article that the writer mentioned the high story without politi political science has no fruit. Okay. Political science without history has no root. It is mean our knowledge of history is meaningless. Uh, if the if the political bearings uh, of events mm -hmm. and movements are not adequate evaluated, so uh, the history of the ninth uh, sorry. Uh, for example, is an incompletely a narration, narration, narration of facts, unless full significance of the movement, like nationalism, uh, imperialism, individualism. Socialism and other are brought out. In conclusion, no matter how developed a, a state is, if history is not applied, then the politics of the country is unstable and there will be the same mistakes as in the past. History has to advance and stabilize stabilize the politics in the country that's all from me madam my madam mia Okay, thank you, Arisni. That is a very uh, long answer eh, from you. All right. Uh, okay, ke? Uh, yang menanya tu? Okay, madam. All right. So uh, I hope you understand lah uh, the the importance of the history. Why we learn history in the political science. All right. And then the last question for Aisha Turadia. Okay, ada yang nak tanya? So please. Okay, Fatin Afifa. Uh, hi, uh, I have a question. Why okay. discipline is um, important? Why is? Why discipline is important? Okay, maybe may I can rephrase the questions. Why it is important to learn, uh, to learn about the other other disciplines or other social sciences in studying political science? Okay, can you answer? It uh, Aisyah Tura Diyah, kenapa penting untuk kita belajar juga bidang-bidang lain yang berkait rapat dengan sains politik? Okay, answer the questions. Um, I think it is important for us to study and uh, about the other things um, because it will provide us with rules to live uh, in efficiently and effectively so when for example discipline when you have discipline in your life you can uh, make a small sacrifice in the present for a better life in the future so discipline is actually um creates habits and habits makes a a routine and routine become who you are in now and in daily in your life same goes to political science when uh, you learn about political science you can uh, know about the knowledge more than the address person who uh, doesn't have any knowledge about that and you can uh, become a better person for uh, day by day mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, it will provide you to be a, a, a person who has a better knowledge and you can also uh, be a mentor to the other person who are doesn't know anything about uh, any uh, political science, disciplines or uh, anything that the other person that doesn't know about that. 
Alright, so okay, actually, if we learn other other fields in order to learn the political science, we will understand more about the political science. Sebab science politik ni dia akan lebih kuat jika disupport dengan bidang-bidang lain. Alright, okay, very good answer Aisyah itu Radia. I hope uh, yang menanya tu puas hati. Okay, ke boleh terima ke soalan tu? Jawapan tu? Boleh nanti. Alright. Okay, so kita break tiga minit untuk bagi ruang kepada uh, the second group. Okay. Okay, komen, komen. Okay, bagi Madam, this group is macam ni ya. Okay, Madam nampak effort tu. Cuma kadang-kadang uh, slide tu jangan terlalu banyak sangat perkataan. So, kita tak tahu nak catch up yang nak, ba nak baca mana satu. The second is Madam tengok ada jugalah elemen macam membaca. Okay. Uh, membaca sikit lah, okay. Tapi kamu boleh improve tak teruk, tak adalah baca seratus peratus tapi kamu kena orang kata dia ada gaya-gaya sikit lah. Okay, boleh improve lagi tak apa baru part tu. And then in terms of pronunciation tu kena study sikit kan macam mana the correct pronunciation. So So basically okey lah kamu menjawab soalan Cuma Madam harap nanti bila dapat 3, part 4 improve lagi, improve lagi Sebab bila dah habis diploma nanti maksudnya biasalah kamu baru tahun pertama kan So kamu akan getting better and better So tahniah untuk kumpulan ni eh Alright so kita berehat selama 3 minit untuk memberi ruang kepada the next group Okay so the next group kalau tengok pada sini Hmm Ajak 2A. Uh, adalah grup autokratik ke daripada Afifa? Grup Afifa ke? Ya, yeah, Amin. Alright, so Fatin Afifa, yeah. Umayyah, Al-Salwati dengan Aisyah Nur Hamimi, sila bersedia ya. Okay, so kita rehat sekejap 3 minit untuk bagi uh, ni lah. Alright. Thank you, Madam. Alright. Thank you, Madam. Uh -uh.
Okey, Assalamualaikum semua. Adakah grup dua sudah uh, bersedia? Sedia, Madam. Sudah. Alright, uh, boleh buka kamera tapi kalau tak ada line, tak apalah. Nanti sekejap. Alright, jangan. Sorry lah Madam macam serabut lah dengan anaknya, dengan kambingnya, menyampah lah Madam. Okay. Alright. Activities of the government and the people are controlled by Kim's family. Who is Kim's family? Kim's family is... Ma mana introduction je ni lah. Tiba-tiba je Assalamualaikum tak ada. Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Un, and also Kim Jong Un. Um, they are the family that control North Korea activities until now. All the North Koreans greatly admire them. Usually, pictures of Kim Jong Un and Kim Il Sung will be displayed in all public places, for example, at the school or office. There was propaganda that created by the Soviet Union after the Second World War. As a result, Kim Il-sung has continued the propaganda for decades. But slowly, Kim Il-sung replaced the propaganda with his own political ideology called Juchi. This ideology is portrayed as a country that will succeed without the presence of military or economic assistance from foreign countries. Nearly 100% of the North Korea people believe and admire Juche's ideology. In 2011, Kim Jong-un's third son, Kim Jong-un, replaced him as a supreme leader. Kim Jong-un broke change in the economy and the political system, such as reducing punishment for returning defectors by promising not to be harmed and even offering cash reward to them. All information about leaders is about goodness and that information has been conveyed to the people from an early age through education and so on. As a result, all citizens will be loyal and glorify their leaders. Yet, there are some people who are loyal because they are afraid of the punishment so that it will make the society to be loyal to the leader and also the country. Political system in North Korea, North Korea, or Democratic People's Republic of Korea, is a country, is a communist country, and also known as an independent country that holds the election every five years to choose a leader under their official ideology, which is Juche. Juche can be defined as self-reliance which is limited connection with other countries. The North Korea has all types of autocracy, such as authoritarianism, military rule, oligarchy, and totalitarian. North Korea is the supreme leader. Sekejap, sekejap. Ini Fatin Afifa eh. Alright. Under their official ideology, which is Yushin. Ini Aisyah Nur Hamimi. Okay, okay. Juche can be defined as self-reliance, which is limited connection with other countries. The North Korea has all types of autocracy, such as authoritarianism, military rule, oligarchy, and totalitarian. North Korea is governed by the world's longest running hereditary dictatorship of the Kim's family, and three generations have reigned the total power. The election in North Korea is held every five years to choose a new leader. The election only for sure because the leader already decided and the ballot is only having one candidate. The North Korea citizen who are above 17 years old and over need to involve in the election by casting the secret ballot. If the citizen refusing to vote, they will consider as an act of treason because the voting is mandatory. North Korea is the country that have practiced one-party state or one-party system. 
the one party state can be defined as a type of system in the country that have only one political party and no other party is allowed to be sent as a candidate in the election. There are three parties that have in the North Korea, which is the main party is Workers' Party of Korea and the minor parties are Chondo Chongo Party and Korean Social Democratic Party. The two minor party is controlled by the main party, which is Workers' Party of Korea. North Korea is a one-party country. The country is portrayed as violent and inhuman. Um, people have to obey to their leader because their leader controls everything, including dominating legislative, administrative, and also judicial. The people in North Korea are not free to speak out. Even they are not free to give an opinion on something, especially in sensitive matters like politics or culture. In North Korea, if someone disagrees about politics or want to uphold justice in human rights, there is no law for them to uphold justice. The society that has different of opinion with the leader will usually be punished. For example, if any of them speak badly about a leader or a political system, they will be immediately punished. This is because in North Korea society, people are constantly monitored by each other, like friends or family. Among the punishment that offered by the public is prison camps with horrific punishment. Not only that, the punishment given is not only to offenders, but also to family members up to three generations. Besides, North Korea government will use education to influence or discipline the thinking of the people. In other words, the people have been brainwashed since childhood about the leader. For example, materials such as books, magazines, songs, videos, and newspapers refer to the leader only. Not only that, in the North Korea people, there is no internet. So most people do not know what life is like in the other countries and assume they live in the best place. In the meantime, it is the duty of the community to always clean the pictures of the leaders in every house as a sign of respect for them. Nowadays, the population in North Korea is about 25 million. Most families is suffer from poverty. Society in North Korea loves smoking. It affects many people die because of lack of medical equipment, surgical room, and also medicine. All the jobs are determined by the government. The government will determine a person's work according to the needs of the industry or place. So North Korea. Kita tak sebut determine ya, kita sebut determine, determine. Korean have no choice to choose a job according to what they are interested in. The field of work they have is very limited such as factory, construction and medical. Not only that, the people are also told to become workers working in foreign countries as cheap labor. Even though Kim Il-sung has been died for a long time, Kim Il-sung has been the internal president to the society until now. North Korea is one of the autocratic countries that exist today. As a country, international relations will definitely occur. But how does North Korea establish relations with other countries? It is not easy to deal with this country because they implement strict rules and concerns about their privacy. Malaysia is one of the countries that has diplomatic relations with North Korea. Both has established bilateral relations since June 1973. At the time, North Korea under the rule of President Kim Il-sung was working to strengthen a diplomatic relation with developing countries and has established an embassy in Kuala Lumpur in 1974. Over the past 48 years, diplomatic relations between Malaysia and North Korea were arguably friendly until the murder case of Kim Jong-nam which is the stepbrother of President Kim Jong-un at International Kuala Lumpur Airport in 2017. This case became the starting point of relationship tension between the two parties. This case initially sparked 
diplomatic controversy when Pyongyang once banned all Malaysians from leaving North Korea. Then, on March 2021, Kuala Lumpur High Court rejected appeal of North Korean businessman Moon Chul Myung from being extradited to United States on money laundering accusation. North Korea claimed that Malaysia cooperated with the US in extradited citizens. As a result, North Korea has taken a drastic decision by severing diplomatic relations with Malaysia. Other than Malaysia, North Korea also possesses relations with other countries like China. China and North Korea relations have been generally friendly and they both often considered to be closest allies. They also have mutual aid and cooperation treaty. Hence, they have embassies in between their countries. As the North, North Korea generous relationship around 1 to 1,200 US dollars to start. The actual amount of this can depend on the person level in military. This, this benefit are proposed to guarantee a good lifestyle for the general and maintain loyalty to the Supreme Leader Kim Jong Un. This country has their own calendar known as Chuchi calendar. It was beginning used in 1997, it's been on the birthday grandfather of Kim Jong Un, which is Kim Il Sung, on 15 April 1912. It was started with Chuchi One. Based on this calendar, current year 2021 becomes Chuchi 110 in this country. Next is free education. North Korea government provides free education for the citizens. It is include one year kindergarten, four years for primary school, and remain seven years for secondary school. Free education is one of the ways to ensure that the society get proper education, teens, child, and do not let at the behind. Ustaz uh, solat tapi lalai untuk permulaan ini Ustaz Mujur Ustaz ada sedikit nak diperkatakan kepada penonton-penonton semua ya, di dalam ibadat kita. Autocrat is power of individual that control the country. It is lead to reduce power by force. People must accept every decision whenever it, it is good or otherwise. For North Korea, they are no choice. They didn't need to obey the Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un, which is the highest political power. When the leader makes a decision, it is not subject to the limitation of external law. That's all from our group. Thank you. Alright, alright, very good presentation lah. I'm very impressive lah sebab ada lakonan-lakonan tu jadi kelakar pula kan. Okay, uh, Madam perlukan empat soalan daripada members of the floor boleh uh, tentang uh, macam mana North Korea dan sistem autokrasinya. Okay, soalan-soalan. 
So semuanya so, pada Riva. Okey. Okey Hasia. Nak tanya Salwati. Okey Salwati. Okey. Apa soalannya? What is the difference between bilateral and multilateral relation? What is the difference between bilateral and multilateral relation? Relations. Okay, Salwati, can you answer the question? What is the difference between these two terms? All right, madam. Uh, thank you, Asya, for the question. Um, for bilateral, uh, it can be, uh, it is a two-way relation between two countries. It can be economic or political or cultural relation. While multilateral, it's just the same like exchange of goods, uh, services or commodities, but with three or more countries. That's all, madam. Alright. Boleh terima ke? Boleh, okay. madam. Okay, relation ni bilateral dengan multilateral. Maknanya orang kata ini dia uh, menggambarkan tentang uh, uh, apa hubungan, relationship lah. Okay, dengan luar. Pendeknya Salwati jawapan. Cuba kupas-kupas lagi. Salwati. Ya, yeah, madam. Cuba kupas-kupas lagi. Kau tak nak dah? Tak ada, madam. Alright. Alright, the next question for uh, three, three lagi yang tinggal. Okay, ada siapa yang nak bertanya? Uh, saya, madam. Okay, Nelly Husna nak bertanya. Okay. Um, this question I wanted to ask to Sumaya. What will happen? Sumaya. What will happen to North Korea citizens? They are breaking the rules in the country. What happen kepada rakyat jika dia melanggar undang-undang? Yeah. Okay, Sumaya, can you answer the question? Yes, madam. Alright, cuba jawab soalan. Um, what will happen to North Korea citizens? They will be punished. For example, uh, like we said before, North Korea uh, are banned from Western Sin from uh, other than uh, they was uh, propaganda by the North Korea government. Mm. Sumaya, boleh type tak? Uh, tak dengar time sangat lah Sumaya. TV show or drama. Sumaya tak boleh dengar lah. Uh, boleh tak Sumaya type jawapan? Cuba type jawapan dekat ruangan chat. Boleh? Macam tak dengar sangat? Okay. Alright. Okay sementara Sumaya uh, 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 tulis jawapan kat chat tu. Boleh tanya lagi kepada presenter ke... Okay. Saya nak tanya Aisyah Nur Hamimi. Okey, Syaida Nurin okay, nak tanya kepada Aisyah Nur Hamimi. Okey, boleh? So, then soalannya. Nah, Aisyah Nur Hamimi, I want to ask you what is uh, the two minor party? The two minor party. Uh, there are two minor party in North Korea. Uh, firstly is John Dosh Tonggu party. This party is established in eight February 1946 by Kim Tahyun as their first leader. Secondly, uh, Korean Social Democratic Party that was formed on 3 November 1945 by Chu Man-sik. Alright. Alright, so lajunya we jawapan. Uh, Alright, okay. And then the last questions for Patin Afifah ke? Patin Afifah tak ada, tak ada soalan. Kedah, patin belum lagi kan? Okay, Madam. siapa nak tanya? Alright. Ada, ada, Madam. Ah, okay. Uh, what is Jewish ideology? Jews? What is what? <laughs> In Fatin Afifah's slide, there was okay. about uh. Jewish ideology. Jewish ideology. Uh, uh, Fatih Afifah, can you please uh, explain to the 
to the to the class what is the meaning of ju, ju, apa tu tak dengar pun tak dengar sangat maybe kamu boleh explain apa dia yes madam alright um, thank you for your for the good question okay thank you for the that all the Nakulian believe uh, they believe that they believe that this is ideology uh, they believe that their country um, may need help from foreign countries whether in um, whether in military or economic so they believe that their country has everything um, so uh, they don't need help from foreign countries Okay, okay. So Maya dengan Fatin Afifa sila tanya jawapan sebab kamu punya line sangat-sangat tak dengar. Boleh? Mari kita orang tunggu. Tanya. Okay. Yang lain kita dengar ke dia? Alright. Kita cuba tanya. Okay, Madam dua orang lagi tahu. Madam dah siapkan markah. Tinggal dua lagi. Sebenarnya dia cepat-cepat je lah nak buat markah. Okay. Ada dah ke jawapan? Okay, citizens who try break, bukan break, B-R-E-A-K, any rules, they will be punished. For example, North Korea citizens are banned from anything other than propagandas by North Korea government. Citizens that try to bring in, in TV show or drama for other... Oh. Oh my God. It says 30 people have been killed at the public because they watch South Korea drama. You go, or stop it, oh. Alright, so okay, so how about Fatih Afifa? Okay, thank you Sumaya for a very uh, nilah answer ya. Okay, tunggu. Adik dah luar ni. Okay, Juche. Uh, Juche ideology is the ideology that all the North Korean believe, which is they believe that their country which is not Korean no need help from foreign countries. Whether in economy or military, they believe that their country have everything. Ah, Memang pun. Mereka anggap macam negara dia dah bagus, dah perfect. Pemimpin dia bagus. Okay, that is the meaning of Juche. Ideology. Okay, very good Fatin Afifa. Alright. Okay, so okay. Komen Madam adalah so group ni bagus sebabnya dia ada creativity nak buat video apa semua. Walaupun Madam melulis tengok macam H12 minit tapi okay lah. Okay. So um, uh, lagi satu uh, ada yang macam 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 Fatih Afifa macam cakap macam eh macam macam kontrol suara macam selo-selo. Kalau yang Salwati memang rasa dia suara dia macam clear lah. Gambar dia pun clear kan mungkin the way they edit tu. Okey macam Sumayah really looks very sekarang ni Sumayah nampak sangat professional. Macam orang kata uh, apa background putih and then baju pun nampak professional lah. Okay. So okay. Uh, okay very good. Uh, nanti minggu depan boleh hantar apa. Atau minggu ke-14 saya boleh hantar report. Sama dengan group first tadi. Alright. Kita break sekejap. Lepas ni kita akan pergi kepada group group yang ketiga iaitu group Merits and Demerits of Separation of Power ya. Yeah? Uh, alright. Kita break sekejap. Thank you Nadia. All right. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.
Alright, uh, group ni ready ke? Ready ya, madam. madam. Okay, sekejap Madam buka YouTube. Alright. Siapa group? Asia. Lagi siapa lagi? Of our the definition of our work is the of our work is the of our is the Nak putar pula benda ni ni. Yeah, 
think that the point of the merit of the separation of two powers, so the third point is the existence of check and the balance mechanism of two powers. I believe we are mentioning about the balance in the, uh, the balance between um, mechanism of power check and balance uh, in mechanism of power. When the three branches of government, as the fifth judiciary and as well as the legislative, different, but they are related to each other. They are depending. They are depending to each other. And this is done by one branch will affect the other two branches. For example, if uh, uh, there are mistakes done, done by the legislative, it may affect the judiciary and, and the executive. And, and for example, example the parliament of the GST, the, uh, uh, the, the Ministry of Finance, with, with lack of tax and judiciary, will take the legal action if there is a problem implementing it. We are moving to the last. Merit of, of the, the separation of power in the the as the device of government to make, make government, government, the government, the government, the government, the government, the government or the people, or, 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 or the public. public. Okay. okay, so, so as the, the citizen of Malaysia, we, we always wanted the peace and harmony in the country. The, the people, people always wanted, wanted to be, be in, in a peace in Malaysia. Malaysia. Harmony is Malaysia. Because all we know that Malaysia has has very, very various culture, very various races. races. So, so the government, the government is, is more, more ideal to two people with, with the implementation of separation of, of power. power. This, this is, uh, I, believe, I believe, and everyone, everyone knows that, that government, government always, always wants the best for, for the, the government, government the service of, of government, government will be fulfilled by, by three branches, branches of, of government, government uh, various the the legislature, uh, uh, judiciary and, and executive. Therefore, uh, uh, last but not least, as a merit of, of the separation of, of power, power believe, believe that, that when the, the implementation of, of the separation of power, power highlighted that in the, the people and bring, bring the benefits, benefits to the government, government the the people, people, or, or the public. The public. The merit of, of separation, separation of power. power. Jealousy, suspicion, and a so friction between the authors of government. 
This is because the governments often changing in a country before the people can feel its performance. These three branches cannot collaborate well with the government become unstable. For example, do you do you? You can do it. There were problems in Parliament when each member withdraw the support towards Puan Mahathir causes changes in running the government. Next, we move to the last part, which is the conclusion of separation powers. Separation powers, it is refers to the division of government responsibility in three branches, which are the executive, executive, and judiciary. The distinction between the three powers is an important characteristic of democratic policy. It is can be called as pillars of rule of law. Next. The separation of powers is important because it provides a vital system of check and balance so that the abuse of power can be prevented. A government may be so constituted as no man should be compared to the things too, which the law does not obligate. No force to obtain from things which law permits. Lastly, this system also has legislature, executive and judiciary limit their powers. They will control each other and accountable to each other. Therefore, they stick for the system. That's all from us. Thank you. If there are any questions, just let us know. Alright. Sekejap, ini tak markah ya. Okay, so I need uh, questions from the members of the floor. Boleh ke? Uh, I have a question. Alright. Who is that? Okay, I want to ask to Hasya. Okay, Hasya, are you ready? Okay. Hasya, what is the fusion of power? Can you explain it in detail? That's all my question. Okay, Hasya. What is the fusion of power? Can you explain it detail? Fusion of power is actually overlap that mentioned earlier in the video. It is overlap between legislature and executive branch where several individuals involved in legislature, parliament, that consists of two houses that are House of Representatives and Senate. Uh, the they are involved in also involved in executive to make it easier for them to propose a law or policy within the government and reduce the conflict between two branches because it uh, want to make a policy they must ask each other and those who represent the two bodies are the same person. For example, a member of parliament become a member of federal government cabinet. And at the same time, the member of parliament also had a ministry. That's all. All right. Okay, very good. So there is the fusion of power where the legislative and executive is the same person. Okay, second question. For Aisha, Nelly, or Rabiatu Adawia. Can I ask Sheikh for Rabiatu Adawia? Of course, Arisni. Proceed. Okay. Sorry, Rabiatu. I'm not clear about the pillars of rule of the law. So, can you explain it more? Pillars of the rules of the law? Yes. Okay, Rabiatu Adawia, can you explain? Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay. Okay, these three branches are said to be the pillars of the rule of the law because they are directly involved in the lawmaking process. Uh, they are the policy actors that we have learned in PAT 104, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. They uh they enacted law in their respective places. Okay, for executive at the cabinet level, legislature mm -hmm. at the parliamentary, while judiciary at the court. They have mm -hmm. several process 
in order to make the verification from others. Uh, therefore, we can conclude that the, the three branches uh, are, the, are the pillars of the rule of the law. Most of the law that we have practiced to this day are the result from them. In other words, we can say that without the three branches, the law cannot be formed well and without the law, the country will be in mess. That's all. Alright, can you understand that class? That um, pillars of the ni adalah tiga badan tu tadi. Okay, so hari sini okay? Okay, madam. I got okay. it. Thank you, Rabia tu. Okay, soalan untuk Aisyah Fatihah dan Nelly Husna pula. Okay, ada sesiapa yang nak bertanya? Madam, can I ask another question? Boleh. Okay. Uh, I want to ask to Aisha. Uh, Aisha, uh, can you explain expression of power that you said earlier as a deceive government for govern? This all. Deceive? Uh -uh. Deceive De government for govern. Deceive. Safe, good. Aisha, oh. Aisha. Okay, thank you, uh, Jelani, for your question. Uh, maybe uh, it is device. Okay, maybe I, I, uh, there's a mistake. Oh, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. So, uh, explain more about uh, as a device woman to make government safe for the government. So, the government here refers to the or when it comes to a device government, a device government here refers to this. Oh no, we do have three branches of the government in the government. We have legislature, executive, and judiciary. So these three uh, important branches help in the development and of course to uh, to ensure the welfare of the government. Just imagine, if our country did not implement the separation of power, it might be that uh, if uh, first, if our country did not implement the separation of power in the government, and the power only in a single person, in the hand of a single person, I might think that uh, the possibility to misuse the power is very high. And uh, what about the government? Uh, well, we all know that Malaysia is such a democratic country. So, if um, if the government did not, uh, how we are going to ensure the safety of the government? So, based on the merits of the separation of power as a device uh, of government, is it the implementation of the of power is the is the right choice and. Okay, suara kamu sendiri tak berkelia Tapi itulah a device for government To apa, for to safe govern lah So my device ni bermaksud satu alat Maknanya bila amalkan separation of power Separation of power tu sendiri akan menjadi sebuah negara tu selamat untuk rakyatnya Sebab sesama tiga badan tu dia check kerja antara satu sama lain So that's good lah for rakyat Okay thank you Aisyah Fatihah And then Rusha Swani Okay and then the last question for Neili Husna uh, I have Can you question. ask questions? Siapa tu? Okay, Wan Muhammad Akram. Yeah, okay. Why executive, legislative and judicial branch uh, need to be separated? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you for the question. Okay, for this question, um, of course because it is essential because to prevent, um, to prevent the abuse of powers and to safeguard freedom for all. This is important so that they are able to balance each other out. If one power does some unconstitutional, the others can prevent a law from being enforced. That's all from me. Right, thank you. Okay, uh, comment, madam. 
adalah group ni macam dia ada presentation skill tu dia ada suara dia jelas dalam video maknanya pemakaian yang okey maknanya orang kata a presentation skill tu tidaklah perfect tetapi orang kata baguslah maknanya orang kata yang penting kejelasan suara faham tak macam ke bila kita bercakap kalau kita bercakap keluar suara macam semut ya kan okey macam Nelly tu memang suara dia kuat kau mainlah tapi kena tengok sikit present uh, pronunciation kalau kamu rasa tak pasti dengan pronunciation boleh google dia boleh kita klik dengar bunyi yang sebenar so buat lepas tu and then kita practice practice Uh, nanti okey, okey. So macam perkataan determine, device, okey. So, so sometimes kalau kita tak pasti kita boleh google lah, google translate sebab takut ialah bila ODL ni cakap lain kita macam apa yang dia maksudkan ni sebab biasalah beda ODL ni kan. Uh, so kena improve lah uh, kamu punya pronunciation. So but, but then overall it's very good presentation. Alright. Okey habislah presentation untuk hari ni. Thank you kepada yang menanya dan tahniah juga kepada presenter lega lah. Ha, tinggal lagi nak kena buat ha, report lah. So untuk minggu depan Madam rasa Madam nak tiga grup saja. Hari sini bawa PM Madam dia kata ada tujuh grup. So tinggalkan satu grup untuk minggu ke-14. Boleh ke? Sebab Madam rasa kita tak boleh nak dengar presentation sampai tiga empat. Sebab kita nak tanya lagi apa lagi takut nanti kita jadi kelang kabut kan. So maintainkan minggu depan tiga grup. Ha, bagi link so media akan pasang sebab takut korang semua masalah lah in terms of line. Okay. Okay so very good. Ha, minggu depan ha, pula. Alright. Assalamualaikum semua. Thank you Madam. Thank you Madam. Thank you Madam.